If Will and Kate are watching and you're still thinking about baby names, may I suggest Quickster? Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hill. Earnings taking center stage on Wall Street today. The Dow being pulled in opposite directions as DuPont led the index higher while travelers weighed it down. More on that in a moment. Joining me in studio today, Brian Hinman and Jason Moser. Guys, our top story, Netflix. Second quarter profits came in higher than expected and the company pulled in 630,000 new U.S. subscribers. But Wall Street was hoping for more and shares were down on the results. This is a good quarter, particularly when you consider that from a new subscriber standpoint, this is historically the weakest quarter for them. They did pretty well. Yeah, I think they did pretty well. I mean, there's a little bit in this report, I think, for everyone. Uh, with that said, I think that subscribers were a little bit light. I think 630,000, uh, there were expectations out there for somewhere in the neighborhood of 800,000. And we really know that with Netflix, it all boils down to subscribers. That is what's going to justify their heavy content spending. And that content spending is going to get heavier as time goes on. So they need to keep growing those subscribers. Uh, big news last week, uh, the Emmy nominations for House of Cards, and uh, I think when Netflix got into the original content business, a lot of people thought, well, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Are you surprised at how quickly they've progressed in a short amount of time? Very much so. You know, I was one of those skeptics who thought, you know, they're entering into uh, a market where they have no idea what the heck they're doing. And that was about a year ago that they started with the original programming. And they're already getting Emmy nods. Uh, this is very impressive. And we might find ourselves at a watershed moment here. What we still don't know, though, is how those accolades are going to flow through the financials and whether or not it's going to be a success financially. Uh, you look at the stock, it's down a little bit today. But over the last year, it's just had an amazing run. Is this stock still a little on the pricey side? <laughs> yeah, for me at least it is. I mean, it's, it's definitely been a great year. They've been a little bit of a victim of their own success here. Uh, the assumptions that are that are going into the stock price today are 60 to 90 million paying subscribers, which I, th I think that's just robust. To me, there are still a lot of questions out there in regard to Netflix's staying power. Uh, the switching costs are extremely low. There is no real pricing power to speak of, and competition is only growing. So I understand the move towards original content, but I'm still not sold on the stock price today. All right, let's get to some of the day's movers and shakers. Wendy's hitting a new 52-week high after second quarter profits came in higher than expected. Wendy's also announced a plan to sell 425 company-owned locations to franchise operators. What do you think? Is this a good plan? Yeah, well, I think the plan is there. I mean, the, the, this is now the third quarter where it looks like their turnaround plan is gaining some traction. Uh, Wendy's is in a tough spot. They're trying to rebrand themselves uh, a little higher up on the food chain, uh, distance themselves a little bit from McDonald's, put themselves more along the lines of a Red Robin gourmet burger or a Chipotle or a Panera, something like that. So they're redoing a lot of stores uh, and they're trying to shunt off some of the, the cost of those redesigns onto franchisees. Travelers reported a record quarterly profit, but higher interest rates hurt the company's bond portfolio and shares were down. Boy, that's just a kick in the teeth. <laughs> you know, I, I was saying, I wish I had my traveler's umbrella here from back in my days working at the company. I'd put it up. There's some dark clouds out there for travelers today, but you know, some good stuff and some bad stuff with this report. I mean, the good stuff is their combined ratio came down. That means they're, they're writing good policies and doing good business. Uh, the bad news is, like you mentioned, that book value came down on a write down on the bond portfolio. Not much they can do there. We know that insurers invest in a lot of fixed income instruments. Uh, long term, though, I think the travelers is a very well-run company. The one hesitation I have here is they did say that they're going to be they're going to be cutting their pricing for auto insurance policies, which means they're chasing after some of that business. And typically, when we see insurers chase after business, it doesn't always end that well. So I'd be keeping my eye on that. But I do like this company for the long haul. Shares of SourceFire up nearly 30 percent today after Cisco Systems bought the cybersecurity company for 2.7 billion. It's the biggest deal of the year so far for Cisco Systems, but you know they've been known to pull the trigger on deals, so we've still got some time. That they have, and this was an all-cash deal, so uh, share owners of SourceFire are happy. Uh, <laughs> Cisco paid about 10 times sales for SourceFire, so this was a rich deal. Strategically, it looks pretty sound. Uh, SourceFire had strength in uh, networking and firewall, which is an area where uh, Cisco is really getting its lunch eaten. So they're going to shore that up, and this uh, looks like it goes right along with uh, another acquisition they made earlier in the year, uh, Cognitive. Uh, so they're going to combine these products, I think, and uh, you know, make, make themselves have a little more staying power and security. 
And finally, Radio Shack's second quarter loss was wider than expected. The company's CFO is leaving as well. This was your stock to watch yesterday. What did you think of the quarter? <laughs> yeah, talk about dark clouds. I mean, the theme of this one is five pillars, right? They have a five-pillar strategy in order to turn this operation around. Uh, they've hired a, a, a firm that specializes in turnarounds along with an investment bank to really uh, expose their financial flexibility, as it were. And let me give you a hint here. When you're talking about total liquidity on your balance sheet as opposed to just your cash and short-term investments, that's code for, uh-oh, we're in trouble. I would stay away from the stock, don't need to touch it, move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, that's going to do it for today. Let's look ahead to the rest of the week. What's the stock you've got on your radar? Everybody's favorite stock to hate, Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Facebook announces earnings tomorrow. I'm looking for a couple of things. Uh, I'm looking for daily active users. I like to see that number growing, and I like to see it growing in relation to monthly active users. Uh, and I'm also looking for some commentary on how Social Graph, their search functionality, is working, and also what they're doing to make Facebook users happy because ultimately if they're not keeping their users happy, they're not going to have a business. Wall Street continues to wonder when is this stock going to get back above its IPO price? Do we see that in 2013, do you think? Uh, in 2013, I think you got to have a decent chance. All right. What about you? What are you watching? Yeah, Brian mentioned something about lunch being eaten early. It's got me hungry. I mean, Panera announces earnings after market closes, and I'm going to be keeping an eye on their earnings report. Uh, it's a company I follow. I like I, I like it as a consumer. Uh, but with any of these restaurant stocks, you know, we're, we're looking at their, their total restaurant base, how many they think they can open, looking at gross margin to make sure food cost inflation isn't getting out of control. Uh, all in all, I think Ron Shake is taking this business in the right direction. I own shares personally, and I'm encouraged about their, uh, their long-term prospects. I love their lows of the three cheese bread. I, I love virtually everything they make. Fantastic. So. All right, let's get something to eat. For Jason Moser and Brian Hinman, I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. People on the show may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal.